What's up, everyone? Happy week 18. Ready to talk some NFL Sunday night football showdown season. My name is TJ Zwarich, joined by Tasteful Tides, Timothy Buell. How you doing? I'm doing pretty well. I, you know, we were talking pre shows. I'm tilting Najee Harris pretty hard about that sequence of events. Uh, you know, his own team not challenging his touchdown and then him fumbling on the very, you know, on the one yard line. So that, that, that kind of hurt my, uh, my slate so far, but I still have, I'm still pretty live on FanDuel. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. FanDuel's where I played today too. Uh, things were looking pretty good until uh, I got about 30% Josh Allen and that INT in the red zone at the end of the half, that one hurt a little bit, but at least the game's close, so that means he should still be throwing a lot in the second half here. Lots of football to play, and one of the things we got going on FanDuel too, luckily, is the Sunday night football game is included in the slate, and I got a lot of exposure to that last game of the night. And so because of that, I've already I've already dove in. I've done my research on this late night game. We're ready early in the day to break it down. So let's talk about it from a showdown perspective. Talk starting on DraftKings. Let's go to the captain position first. We like talking optimally. But before we even do that, this game's really going to matter for Green Bay. It's not going to matter so much for Detroit, but it's still a divisional game. And we know how they're coached. We think they're going to be playing pretty hard uh, most of the way through here. What's your uh, what's your first look kind of thoughts on how this game is going to roll four and a half point spread here? Yeah, I don't expect, uh, you know, anybody to be sitting. I think Dan Campbell is going to play his guys 100% uh, regardless of if this game ends up mattering in terms of the playoff picture or not. Um, I don't think, you know, I, I think that it's definitely going to be like a, a run-heavy game from both sides. Um, I think our ownership and our, our, our opti- optimal tools reflect that also. So I'm just kind of curious to hear what your thoughts would be like first person in for, for captain on DK. Like, cause I'm debating between two guys and that's Amon Ra. And then it's also Aaron Jones. Those are the two guys that like, I'm, I can't decide between. Like, I think, I think it's kind of depends on like what, how you think this game is going to go. So for me, I think I want to go Amon Ra St. Brown And the reason I want to do that is because then if we pivot to the flex position here, like I do want to play Aaron Jones, but I also want to play AJ Dillon. And I don't really feel comfortable pairing them together. If Aaron Jones is in the MVP or captain position, Um, if I'm playing him to be the, the multiplier, I kind of just want to hope he's getting all the touchdowns. And so with a guy like Amon Ross St. Brown there, we are kind of playing to the spread we got both these running backs who are going to get a lot of touches in the game. And we're hoping Green Bay pulls ahead with the lead. They're going to be running the ball lots. And then that leans to Amon Ross St. Brown having to catch a lot of passes. I think from an optimal perspective, this is kind of my favorite way to start out a lineup. And our, and our simulation tool reflects Amon Ross as, as the highest, uh, you know, optimal captain rate at 20.76% and only at, at, 19.6 percent owned so you get a little bit of positive leverage whereas aaron jones is actually negatively leveraged in the captain spot so the simulations agree with your take on that and uh, i have no issue starting off the team with him love it and so if we are you are you down to double running back in the flex position uh I, after that? I, I am i am and you know i was gonna say like i don't remember a game where i feel like you could really play four running backs like you just i'm not saying that's the optimal way of doing it it's just like they're they're really four four legit running backs that could easily score a touchdown in this game um and both defenses are just un like unbelievably bad against the run so you know it's but i'm i'm totally fine with playing jones and dill in flex you know me, we're starting to talk optimally, but you know me, I, I like getting some punts in. I like kind of playing in my single entry lineup, still a little bit of a tournament style, get the most of the optimal plays in there, and then um, find some guys that I think could maybe uh, have some high upside and sl- and break the slate that are nice and cheap. 
rein me in if this is tournaments only and not optimal. First round pick for the Detroit Lions was Jameson Williams. Two weeks ago, he he was on the IR all year. Two weeks ago, he had 13 snaps. Last week, he had 18 snaps. This is now the last game of the season. It doesn't really matter for them for playoff position. They might. He's healthy. They want to see what they got with this rookie. Technically, Khalif Raymond uh, projects better and would be the optimal guy. But my goodness, Jamison Williams is a guy that I think if I was running 150 lineups, I'd want to get minimum 10x the field. He shows up optimally in in, in the flex 5% of the time and is only showing up at 3.75% ownership. So you do get positive leverage with him. So definitely not for optimal lineups, but I, I, I completely so agree bad. with you. Uh, yeah, I completely agree with you. If you are 150 uh, maxing tonight, or even if you're making 20, I think you could have a little pinch of him. And I think that's a really, really good idea. Uh, if you're, I think it's a little thin for like a single entry type build, but uh, definitely for a large field GPP, I'm all about that. For what it's worth, I would do it in a single entry, but that's why Tim's here to rein me in and go, TJ, we got to talk about optimals first. This is not the optimal play. Great tournament play, not the optimal play. How are we looking to fill out this lineup here if we got St. Brown and two of the uh, uh, Green Bay backs here? Are we wanting to take the higher projection play, try and get up to a Aaron Rodgers? Are we wanting to put in Jared Goff since we have his pass catcher? Or are we looking to stay in this mid-tier with the Dubes, Tanyans, Kickers, uh, Charks, and, and the defenses as well? Uh, I think if we're looking for like an optimal play, perhaps we go to Aaron Rodgers um, just for the raw point potential. And let's see what that leaves us for salary. Um, it oh. leaves us 3150, which really mm-hmm. isn't a lot. I mean, you can do something like a Jamison Williams, Khalif Raymond, and then get a, a kicker defense in there. But optimally speaking today, if we want to get Aaron Rodgers in there, I think actually the player we have to plug in is Justin Jackson. We don't have any other um, Detroit running backs. We know that Justin Jackson is going to get a decent amount of snaps. He's he's uh, been a, a electric at times this year, and he's two hundred dollars. How many players are you going to find with this much potential to get a touchdown at two hundred dollars? Yeah, and we have it projected for for uh, you know four points, which for two hundred bucks is, is really quite nice. And we have him showing up the optimal thirteen percent of the time and eleven percent owned. So that's that's a really high optimal rate for a $200 player. So I think that that's completely fine for a large field setting or like a smaller field and a more optimal single entry setting. And this allows, sorry for my cat being extra vocal today, (laughs) but uh, uh, this allows you to fill out your lineup any way you want here. You got Chark, you got Dobbs, um, who I think would probably, Dobbs or Tanyan would probably be the way I'd want to go since we have Aaron Rodgers in there. Um, but you also got Crosby or Badgley. You can pair up with a defense. So many different routes that you can roll here. Talk to me about some tournament plays that we can get to. Uh, large field stuff. We, I've already said it. My favorite play is on the whole slate for tournaments is Jamison Williams. These tight ends have been getting some touchdowns for uh, for uh, Detroit lately as well. Shane Zilstra with a three touchdown game, Brock Wright with a two touchdown game right after him. Who are you looking to go to to differentiate at the flex position in tournaments? And then we will swing it back to captain after that for maybe who we like in some large field stuff. So obviously you can't full fade Aaron Rodgers, but I'm really, I'm, I'm strongly considering, like, I know that we just put a, a lineup with him in, but that was more of just like a kind of chalk your awful lineup, but for like large field multi entering, uh, kind of contests. Aaron Rodgers is coming in way over owned in the flex position. Uh, you know, six, we're having projected for sixty one percent ownership and only showing up the optimal forty eight percent of the time. I don't remember seeing uh, so much negative leverage on a quarterback maybe ever. I mean, I look at at Jamino's simulation tool article every single showdown slate, and I don't think I don't remember seeing so much negative leverage. So I think for tournaments. Um, you know, I think getting 
significantly underweight on Aaron Rodgers and getting overweight to Jared Goff and some of these kind of cheaper Detroit wide receivers is a really, really good idea. It gets you away from some ownership, uh, which is always a good thing, and it doesn't cost you a ton in terms of medium projection, which is what we want, uh, especially in showdown. And if you're playing cash games, we just sort of went the optimal route, but even in a single entry type thing, if you're playing a tournament, that's a great way to just get slightly different with a near optimal lineup. You don't have to change a lot. Make the exact lineup we just built. St. Brown and the captain, both running backs for Green Bay. Um, you get you get yourself a cheapie like Justin Jackson and just play Jared Goff instead of Aaron Rodgers. Right. It gives you a little bit more salary. So you uh, could get up to the likes of, uh, I'm not sure if it would allow you to get up to uh, Jamal Williams there, but even if it doesn't, you can play DJ Chark there and all of a sudden that pairs a lot better since you have um, Jared Goff in that lineup as well. So I like that route quite a bit. Um, reminder, reminder, Jameson Williams, Jameson Williams. That's my guy uh, today. What about the captain position? Obviously we got the salary multiplier today um, on, on uh, DraftKings. I'm with you on Aaron Rodgers being way too overowned at the, at the flex position. I think Goff and Rodgers both could potentially be worth a bit more ownership at the end, at the captain position. Uh, whereas uh, Rodgers going way over owned at the flex. I don't mind him at the captain. Um, my favorite somewhat contrarian play is going to be AJ Dillon. Um, and then if I'm trying to get very off the board, you can guess who it's going to be. It's going to be Jamison Williams. Really, you you would go that far even on the on the captain for him. That's I put it I put it on on survey. I put it on survey today. My bold yep. prediction is Jamison Williams is going to have over a hundred yards receiving. Yeah, and so I'm seeing this as if he has a hundred yards receiving at less than one percent at the captain position. This is like Millie Maker type stuff. Not yeah, no, I don't, yeah, that, but, that's cool. Um, yeah. He gets 100 yards and a touchdown, five catches. Who else can we put in this lineup? All of a sudden, we look at the flex position. Aaron Rodgers, Jared Goff, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon. $9,600 to play whoever the heck I want. Watson, Swift, Williams, Lazard, anyone. And I got both QBs and both of these uh, Green Bay backs we think Green Bay is going to handle them this game. This is a Green Bay wins by two touchdown script. You know, mm -hmm. A.J. Dillon scores one touchdown. Aaron Jones scores one touchdown. Rodgers throws a random one to whoever the last player we throw into this lineup is. I think it's just uh, it's just beautiful. Like, even I don't want to fill out a whole lineup, but somebody like a Christian Watson to fill out uh, fill that out, I think, just makes beautifully. You might be the only person with the Jamison Williams captain lineup. And so it doesn't matter if you're not leaving salary on the table. Right. Uh, even if you do it, like there might be, you do the, all the expensive players with Jamison Williams at the captain. Well, if that happens, you may be splitting the Millie with three to four other people. That's still a pretty big payday. And if you want to differentiate that at all, you're going to be the only one. Uh, um, I think DeAndre Swift is a really interesting captain today. Uh, showing up at, at 5% 5, 5 projected captain ownership and coming in at 10%, 9.38% optimal rate. Uh, I think that's amazing. That's really, really good positive leverage and coming in at the same optimal rate as Aaron Rodgers at half the ownership. Uh, I think that that would be my kind of get, get weird uh, captain. If you have any questions for us, premium members, get them in the live stream chat in our Discord. If you're watching us on YouTube, feel free to drop a comment, drop a question, and of course, make sure you've subscribed, hit that like button, hit the notification bell as well. Let's pivot over to FanDuel here, my uh, my site of choice where I played 100 lineups today. Um I haven't looked at this much uh, since we uh, started streaming here. I saw that the... Uh, Vikings are starting to put in their backups. Um, and uh, other than that, not a whole lot of scoring yet. Anything else going on. So we still can focus on this next game. It's uh, it's chill. It's calm. They're waiting for the afternoon games to start here. Um, let's pivot over to the showdown slate on the lineup HQ. 
Are you playing on both sites today, or are you just playing on DK for show? No, I I'll, I always play uh, on both sites. Love it. I think showdown is kind of my favorite way to do that. Like if I'm feeling like just sitting down, making one lineup on both sites, getting my getting my Tim Buell Tasteful Tides lineups on. A showdown slate is exactly how I like doing it. Just one main lineup on FanDuel, one main lineup on DK. Differentiate a little on those two based on the salaries. Um, and then uh, go from there a little bit. We don't have to worry about the salary multiplier over here on FanDuel. Who do you like for the MVP position? I think uh, for my optimal single entry, I'd want to go Aaron Jones. Or sorry, Aaron Rodgers. What about you? Uh, honestly, uh, I'm between Jared Goff and Aaron Jones, but, uh, it's definitely Aaron Rodgers is definitely uh, a viable choice. And I definitely trust him on FanDuel more than I do on DK because we really need the touchdowns on FanDuel. So I, I'm fine if people want to do Aaron Rodgers, for, you know, the more optimal strategy, but I may pivot to Jared Goff. And so you're trying to you're not only trying to cash in some cash games, you're trying to win a tournament lineup here. You get some you get Jared Goff only less than a two point projection difference, less than one and a half point projection difference, but a co- a third of the ownership. Right. To me, that looks that's a great way of doing it. I that he'd probably be my favorite MVP for tournaments. But take ownership out of it. Say we're just talking cash games. Yeah. I mean, if you're just talking cash games, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is the MVP. Um, but to be honest, like how many people are playing cash games right now? I say we roll Jared Goff because yeah. you're torn between two, between Aaron Jones and Jared Goff, still with him being half the ownership. I'd way rather play Goff. And it's like we mentioned on DraftKings, I want to play both running backs. So I don't want right. to play them at the running at the uh at the MVP position. What do you think about for our our main lineup today, we're getting a little bit different here on FanDuel. We're not playing a cash game style lineup. We're rolling with Goff, Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, whose price here I just love. Um, why isn't it letting me put it in here? There we go. My mouse is being all weird. There. Um, what do you think about that for starting our optimals? It still leaves us 10K for the last two positions, allowing us to do whatever we want. Yeah. I, I, Obviously outside of Aaron Rodgers. Right. Like for me, I, I think that's like the, the best way to go for, for tournaments, single entries. Um, like if you're really playing, you know, 50, 50 double up type scenarios, then maybe that's not the way to go. But I, it pivoting away from Aaron Rodgers today, I think is going to be a really, really, uh, I think that's the way that I'm going to go tonight. I'm just going to lean on, lean into the fact that green Bay has two stud running backs. They absorb targets also, which are nice for drafting, more for draftings, obviously, but they're going to get all the goal line work. So I can get the touchdown upside, which is so important for FanDuel. Um, so I'm just going to hope that it's going to be A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones today. Can you guess if I play Showdown tonight for FanDuel? Can you guess what my lineup is going to be? I, I know that I know one person that's going to be in it for sure. And if I plug in Amon Ross St. Brown with Goff at the MVP, all of a sudden it leaves me a perfect amount of salary for my favorite tournament play on the slate. That is what worries me about this lineup set that we have, though, is from an optimal standpoint, we I feel like Amon Ross St. Brown is a tough, tough fade today. That, that worries me. Um, and so I'd want to get him in this lineup, but that does only yeah. leave us the 6Ks for Zilstra Williams. Uh, James Mitchell, Mercedes Lewis. It's worrisome. It's not worrisome for me because I just want to play Jamison Williams. <laughs> but uh, if we're not going that route, I do think it's worth a look to say, hey, maybe I want to play the, one of these two Detroit running backs uh, because then that allows me, um, if I have the more pass catching one with uh, DeAndre Swift. Well, then all of a sudden I still have Justin Jackson and Randall Cobb and Brock Wright, and I feel a lot more comfortable with that. Um, Other routes you can do it is maybe this isn't the most high-scoring game. Um, Not a whole lot of passing touchdowns. I get one, a pass catcher like DJ Chark, and I fill in a kicker here. Um, A bunch of different routes that you can go about it. Um, If we swap over to back to the MVP position here and talk about large field contrarian stuff, 
I don't think I need to go Jamison Williams here at the captain or at the MVP, sorry, on FanDuel. Having said that, if I was running at 150, I bet you I'd still have two or three of them. My favorite for tournaments by far is AJ Dillon. Mm -hmm. And then my next two are going to be AJ, uh, DeAndre Swift is number two and Jamal Williams is number three. Yeah, I'd probably go Swift one, Dylan two, Goff three, uh, because Rodgers, Jones, and Brown are going to eat up. Yeah, the sorry, Go Goff would probably yeah. be one, but just outside of. Uh... Yeah, 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 uh, because Rodgers, Jones, and Brown are going to eat up a ton of MVP usage uh, ownership. So um, I think I, I think. Goff is just going to be so, so underutilized in, on both sites tonight in the captain MV, MVP spot. And then I, you know, I, I agree with you though. I really like AJ Dillon, especially on FanDuel. I think that's a, a really, really strong play for MVP or flex. Give me a hot take before we get out of here, Tim. Mine, Jameson Williams is going to have a hundred yards and a touchdown in this game. Give me one. Yeah, I was uh, gonna say I was gonna say the people. same thing, but it's gonna be DeAndre Swift. I think he has an explosion game this uh, tonight. Maybe play both of them, and you're gonna be winning all of the money today. That'll do it for this edition of the Premium Lineup HQ Showdown Show. Thank you so much for those who joined on YouTube. For those who are gonna watch it later in the day, make sure you hit that like button over there as well. Tag Tim and I in the comments. If you got any questions, hit us up on Discord. We'll uh, be able to answer you there. I don't know if Tim will, but I will. I got nothing going on the rest of the day. I'm just watching football. Uh, yeah. So uh, let us know, and uh, good luck tonight, everyone. We will uh, see you next time. Peace. <laughs>